Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world, today the Dove Dog and I are going to take this 1978 Chevrolet Camaro that we picked up on Facebook Marketplace and see if we can't make it just a little bit better. You heard Camaro, so you came out running. Check this thing out. Never mind that Camaro, that's for another day. Anyway, let's cut back to a much warmer time because it's 5 degrees out in uh, Freedom Units today. So here's the story on this one. I saw it on the old Facebook marketplace. I was on my way down to Watertown to the Vintiques uh, 44th Annual Car Show in Watertown, South Dakota. It was a screaming deal. I really wanted to go to that show. I hadn't been there in like two, three years. I messaged one of my buddies who was kind of a car guy. And uh, I know he's got some cash sitting around. I said, hey, you wanna go pick this car up for me? He says, what do I look for? I says, just make sure there ain't no giant gaping holes in the floor. It is what they say it is. Give them the money and uh, get a bill of sale and I'll come pick up the car with you when I get back. So now I'm back. We're gonna go get this thing. The asking price was great. The paint looked phenomenal. It's got five spokes on it, white letters out. It's an automatic 350. It's got a newer 350. It's got electric fans. There is an overheating issue. So we're gonna take the trailer and we're gonna haul it home. It's about 40 miles away. That was the other thing. It was super close to home. It's got some nasty, ugly front aftermarket bucket seats, so those gotta go. I'm thinking get rid of the wheels and tires. They're my kind of my favorite wheels and tires. They're torque thrusts, or well, wannabe torque thrusts, I don't know, but they're the shiny ones, not the dirty mags. And it's got white letters out, which we can fix. But I just they just don't look right on that car. They look good, but not, I think we could do better. All right, there she is. I've been mowing around it and everything. We'll uh, have to get her fired up and loaded up. Beautiful view of the park. Apparently this is High Street, and they have a lot of problems with signs disappearing weird here she is looks like it's got some fresh aluminized exhaust bf goodies what size 235 60s 245 60s a lot of rubber there not a t-top car oh looks like we are gonna need a mirror they are american racing torque thrust d's what size we got in the front 215 65s I guess the hood's got kind of a, yeah, you could see the gaps were pretty terrible. Paint's cracked there. So she ain't perfect, but a little nick in the paint there. Way too good to be just mowing around though. Oh yeah. Looks like we got some spare window felts in the back. Somebody put a Z28 badge on it, but we don't think it's a Z28 car. But we don't know, we're not experts. We got our Mortski repair, low life keychain. Get yours at Mortski.com. Manual windows, nice door panels. Oh, it is vintage air. Oh, she is uh, really mothball smelly in here. New JVC deck, thankfully they didn't cut that in. Looks like we gotta put a glove box in there. Yeah, these pro car seats are no bueno. All right, let's see if she fires up. Ooh, I what that switch is for under the dash. Add on temp gauge, just in case the one on the dash is lying to you. Factory tack goes to seven grand, 130 mile per speedometer. Hey. Oh, it's got the Z28 horn button. They must have wrapped the steering wheel. Oh, and it's still sticky. God dang it. <laughs> Hate these things. Oh my gosh, this seat is way too tall. Hardware Hank. Oh, I found the mirror. Oh, they must have just been using it to cut lines. It's right there. It's, it's stuck to the center console. <laughs> They started doing the uh, stereo wiring. Oh my God, this seat is so bad. <laughs> Way better. Oh, oh, the headliner is nice, but it's it's kind of dropped down. Oh. Don't put stupid seats in your car. Tech tip of the day. Looks like 51,000 miles. Oh, it's a two-handed start operation, I'm told. That must be the door key. You gotta adjust the neutral safety switch. Ah, you have to jiggle the handle. Ooh, she sounds pretty good though. Aww. Like them spinning tires? <laughs> you like them spinning tires, do you?
She's uh, pretty peppy. Here we go. Want to go talk to the neighbor that's staring at you? I forgot, it's got headers. That's why it's so fast. Hopefully it's got red spark plug wires. Ooh, new sway bar. Oh yeah, floors have been packed. All right, tied down, loaded for bear. Let's get out of here. Go wash our hands up. Grab a road soda. And I want to get back in the shop. So let's see if this thing will fire up. I have my doubts. It's been sitting here for a good four months. Oh, no, dang it. Don't scrub our nice racing seats. Finally found the keys. It's got a Mortsky Low Life keychain. Get yours at Mortsky.com. And Stone Cold Dead. Well, I guess we'll pop the hood and hook up a booster pack. You know how to open the hood, Duff? I don't think we've ever had the hood open on this thing in the several months it's been sitting here. Oh, I remember there was a special something with the uh, neutral safety switch. Let's try that. Nope, she's dead. And Duff said I tried getting the hood open, but it's frozen shut. So we're just gonna have to tow it in. You gonna drive the side-by-side -side, or you gonna drive this thing. I'd prefer you drove this thing because I don't fit in it for crap. Okay, good talk. Alrighty. The old golf cart roped her in. So, we're going to let it thaw for a bit. And then we're going to lift it up, check out the bottom side, and then hopefully we can get the hood open. Go from there. Alright, we finally got this thing thawed out. Duff couldn't get the hood open, so I had to help him out a little bit. But let's take a look at this thing. We're going to do our typical Mortsky walk around where we just absolutely rip this car apart. Just kidding, this is... Actually, I'm not kidding, but this, this is a pretty good one for us. And we set the bar pretty high, and generally speaking... No, not that generally. Uh, I'm a pessimist, so I don't look at the goods. I look at the bads. And so get ready for some talking. If you wanna see some work getting done, just go ahead and fast forward to like two thirds of the way through the video. Right, Duff? Right. So before we get started, uh, this thing came up on Facebook Marketplace. A lady was selling it for her son who was going off to school and needed money for school and he owed some money on it. And the first thing I say about owning a vintage car, a classic car, a collector car, a muscle car, Anything other than a daily driver, and even then I don't support it, don't borrow money to buy a car. Save up your money, pay cash for these kind of purchases. Daily drivers, I'd prefer you just bought something below your means and, and uh, it was 20 years old and you paid cash as well, but not everybody's like me and a lot of people enjoy making car payments, maybe, apparently, and putting cash in bankers' pockets, but anyway, don't finance an old car, absolutely not. It's a terrible idea. Just don't do it. So, that's how we got this thing. They said there was an overheating issue. Uh, there was about four, four or five pictures of the car, uh, like one of the interior, one of the engine bay, and then a couple on each corner. I had actually been to my chiropractor and this car was a block down the street. And so I'd seen this car about a month prior to it being for sale, so I kind of knew what I was getting into, you know, driving by at 20 mile an hour, seeing one side of the car. But anyway, it was a pretty good deal. We jumped on it and here we are. So let's take a look at this thing. So the front ends of these, these later cars, I'm not sure when it started. I think like 70, I'm, I'm not even gonna say a year cause I'm not an F body expert. These are the F bodies, the Trans Amaro birds are the F bodies. Uh, Firebird, Camaro, Trans Am, all that good stuff. The later ones for sure, 77, 81 had this plastic front end going on here and they never really fit that great because it's steel it's plastic it's molded and the paint really never sticks i think you're supposed to use some type of special paint but it's cracked there it's cracked there this is all a pretty fresh paint job but it's just it isn't that great the fit and finish it's got a gap there it's got a gap there the hood gaps are pretty terrible uh, there's a couple cracks in the paint on the hood there and then somebody must have closed her down on the uh, carb stud and got her there this is way better than a amateur paint job but it's not super professional it looks like it's wet sanded and cleared but i'm not a paint expert either some of the things that they missed on is is this surround duff show them the surround right there 
I'm guessing it should be either black or body color. They just left it in that crappy, rusty, whatever primer that it comes in. So that should be painted. Uh, it's got, I believe, 15 by 7 all the way around. And there are two 15, 65 BF goodies on the front and two 45, 60s on the rear. These are American Racing Polished Torque Thrust 2s. It might be 15 by 8s in the rear. This is not a Z28 car. I think Z28 cars had a little bit different fender, and they should have like a fender flare there, and then a fender flare in front of that wheel. Now, the reason I say amateur restoration on this thing is like, and this probably is an amateur. They bought new mirrors, but the glass fell out. So, and then like I said, they bought that new surround up there, but they didn't paint it. Also looks like we're missing windshield wipers. So they didn't quite finish this thing out. A couple of chips on the door edge guard. They were driving it. It's it's too nice to be a daily driver, but it's not quite nice enough to be a full-on show car. So, in my opinion, this car needs to, either needs to be taken the extra mile or just thoroughly enjoy it as it is. But it's definitely got the op opportunity to be a good car. Um, back bumper's plastic. It's got this fairing on the back, which I believe is an option. Uh, it's got the Z28 logo on the back emblem uh the 75 74 and newer cars have this big back window the 70 to 73s have a smaller back window which i think is sexier sexy couple bubbles in the paint there um i should wash this car that's a good idea if you're buying a nice car like this ask the owner if you can wash it you know run your hands over every square inch of this thing and really know what you're getting i don't see a lot of rust or bondo in the lower quarters or the rockers and stuff so she's pretty good again this mirror is hosed up the interior is the best and worst part of this car um they put new door panels new seats new dash pad a new carpet they put mothballs in here which stinks they look at they put new seat belts in and a new stereo there but look at these seats the pro car sport look at how close this thing is to the roof I have to recline that seat way back just to drive it. Uh, the, the dome lights just hang in there. Steering wheel I think is new, but it's all sticky. Oh, they spent a lot of money on new parts. Like I said, new sill plates, door panels, seats, carpet. It's all there. I haven't opened the trunk yet. Hopefully we can find the heater controls and the dash pad that's missing. But pretty dang nice car. Should we check under the hood, Duff? Just because you can't open it doesn't mean that we can't get her open. So here she is. First thing I noticed is it's got air conditioning aftermarket air conditioning. I'm guessing it's a vintage air setup. I uh, saw that in the picture. They didn't advertise it as that. So that's a nice little bonus. Uh, the not so nice bonus is that AC compressor is rubbing on our top radiator hose. At least it's not a flexi hose. It's a new hose. Inner fenders are new. It's got electric fans, so I'm wondering if that isn't our overheating issue. If they got it wired wrong, wrong size fans, turning the wrong way, or you just get rid of them and put a mechanical clutch fan, should be fine. It's got a later 86 a newer engine with these center bolts and the valve covers. It's got our favorite headers down there. Looks like they fit okay though. Of course they're rusty. Chrome valve covers, chrome dipstick. It's got an aftermarket temp gauge that we saw on the dash. Edelbrock intake, Edelbrock 1406 carb with electric choke. They have since trimmed off the carb stud that went through the bottom of the hood. Look at that, the air cleaner's still rubbing. You can see the witness marks. The funny part is they put this one inch spacer in there to uh, get more horsepowers and they schmucked up their brand new hood, don't it? Not a good idea. I think all these cars were Power brake cars. It's got a new master cylinder on it. Uh, looks like they used the entire front pulley and whatever setup for this thing because it's got that little mini serpentine belt set up. So I'm guessing it's out of like a two wheel drive Chevy pickup or a Caprice or something. Ooh, all kinds of blue silicone around the fuel pump. Looks like it's got a Mr. Gasket fuel pressure regulator. Got the anodized. Fuel AN fuel fittings and the braided hose, open element air cleaner, open element breather on the valve cover. Ooh, my favorite red HEI distributor cap. Does look like they put a new wire harness in here. There's some tags I saw on the wire harness. Nap a battery that's dead on us. What's this? Bonus wiring all hooked to. 
That could use some cleaning up. I see it's got the AC hoses here, but no heater hoses. There should be a giant heater box in this thing that takes up half the engine bay. I remember smashing the one in the old uh, Trans Am. Here we go. Just the way we wanted it to come apart. All kinds of uh, silicone on the firewall. They could have done a better job with the old install on the HVAC. I wonder if these aren't our heater hoses. Oh yeah, there's our heater shut out. They just got it looped, it looks like. So if we want heat, which we're gonna want because it's four freaking degrees today, we're gonna need to hook that up to the engine. I guess they only want it as a summer driver in fair weather because no wipers. Uh, electric choke, that'll be nice for winter driving though. Headers, not so much for winter driving. So yeah, spent big bucks. I mean, the engine's all nice and cleaned up and detailed. New carburetor, new intake, new AC, no hoses, new belts, new wire harness, new radiator. Hopefully we can just put a mechanical fan on it and make that uh, cool. That would be great. That would be really cool. I see what you did there. All right, let's take a look at the bottom side of this thing and see if it's half as good as the top. So one thing to look at when you look at a repaint is how they painted the bottom part of the car because the painters either got to lift the car up or get on his or hers hands and knees to uh, get a good coat on the bottoms of the rockers and such. And then the same deal with if there's a bunch of Bondo in there, they got to get down and sand all that. And, and usually that's where they get lazy, kind of like when they get lazy and don't put the bolts in between the fender and the inner fender. Or they don't tape off the brake lines and just paint right over them. Anywho, uh, core support's a little bit, I mean, not terribly rusty, but it's a high dollar item that nobody sees. So usually repair shops, body shops don't replace that. It's fine structurally, but that's what makes this car a driver, not a show car. Like I said, new inner fenders, they painted them. Well, they painted the insides of the fenders even. Must be an original bumper cover. It's kind of tore through there or it's been on there for quite some time. Yeah, it's tore through right there as well. So stuff like that's gonna not allow it to keep its shape. It's got brand new power steering hoses, brand new power steering box on it. Uh, there's two different ratios. I wonder which one they put in. There's a quick ratio on the Z28 cars. Looks like it could use some sway bar bushings and end link bushings. They didn't put those in there. It's got new tie rod ends in it though. Looks like it's got some new rotors and calipers. They painted the frame. Well, kind of. Anyway, they undercoated a bunch of it. It's got a one piece gasket on the oil pan. That's nice to see. Looks like they got the wrong bolts for the uh, engine mounts. Not a big deal, but when you're finicky on a hundred point car like me, you know, it matters. Looks like they kind of bent that. We'll fix that. that vent hose for the EVAP. Yeah, great big ginormous fuel pump. I don't know why that's on there. I don't know why they put all this silly AM fitting stuff either, but whatever. Looks like they didn't put new shocks up front. So if you want to go all out, put those on there. Looks like the headers clear well. They ain't all banged up. Tight against the starter per usual. This thing felt like it had, I, d I just drove it off the trailer and in here and that was about it. But it felt like it had a stall converter and sure enough, there's a little tiny converter. So I'm guessing that's a higher stall converter than what factory is. I don't know what that mystery wire is, but it's not hooked up. It even, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the intermediate steering shaft between the steering column and the box is new. The proportioning valve is new. They got nylon nuts on these engine mount bolts I was talking about, and they don't have enough thread sticking through, so definitely the wrong hardware for that. Headers are rusty per usual. New exhaust. Exhaust looks pretty good. It's got welded mufflers. You know, they welded all the joints instead of bolting them, so if you got to take it apart, kind of a pain. Looks like they put brand new fuel lines. A new hose on it, front to back. They must have put floor pans in. Yeah, they did speed shop the floor pans. They didn't screw them in like he would do, but they put a liberal amount of schmooage everywhere. I'm guessing they had to drill some holes for the new terrible seats, but 
yeah, that's a lot of schmoo stuff to look for. A hundred point car, they would have it all spot welded in like it was from the factory and liberal amounts of schmoo. Big spot to check on these cars is the leaf springs bolt into the unit body. So this is a unibody or unit body or unitized frame or unit on frame or whatever you want to call it. But the leaf springs bolt into the body right here and a lot of times they'll rust out and tear loose. It looks good on this car. Really good actually. So that's nice to see. The rubber looks like it's in good shape. You always want to make sure your rubber is in good shape. But yeah, same deal on this side. They should have drilled out the spot or drilled new holes and then spot welded. This is a, a cross member or a body support and then welded this pan to it. It looks like they just kind of tacked it on the edge instead. So kind of a hack job there. Not as nice as you'd like to see. And again, more schmoo where they just did the panels in. Oh, they left one self tapper in there. There's probably our seat bolt and that nylock isn't even touching the thread, so good job there. Looks like we got a leak coming from our speedo, so we're gonna have to put a new O-ring in that. Not too big of a deal, easy enough, but get rid of this whole mess here. Otherwise it looks pretty dry. Could use a wash job, but I don't see any oil dripping. Sat overnight and the only spot it leaked was that ATF. The subframe looks like it's in good shape. A lot of these cars, yeah, we're driven like the Duke's Hazard, so the cross member's all whammied up. Whammy! But this one looks like it's in good shape. Idle arm is new. A lot of new parts on this car. 10 bolt rear. I don't know if you could get these with a 12 bolt. It looks like somebody put a brand new sway bar on it. They put brand new brake drums on it. Brand new fuel tank. Yeah, a lot of new parts. New shocks on the rear. Uh, I don't know what gear ratio it is. I thought this was like a 373 just the way I was driving it, but that stall is probably what made me feel like that. Uh, Posi? Nope. One wheel peel. I'm guessing it's a 308 or 273 rear ratio. Pretty common in these things. Yeah, they did a nice job with the exhaust. Factory-ish looking. Again, uh, here's your bumper and here's like this balance splash pad. You can kind of tell where the uh, body shops, the give a damn got real low. This is bent up. They didn't sand this filler down. Just kind of caved in there. Got a little extra schmoo just hanging out there. And they didn't really care when they got to that point down there. But yeah, they got pretty good paint coverage down here. Oh yeah, you can see a little bit of mud going on there. They didn't quite make that seem flush, but overall, not too shabby. You can see here's the bottom of the rocker. It starts getting light, and then they just kind of overlapped. This should all be blue, in my opinion. Again, I'm not a restoration specialist on F-bodies, but I feel like this should all be blue. There shouldn't be this black area in these two inches here. I'm guessing they put brand new fenders on it when they painted it by the looks of things. You can see the tag on the inner fender. Those are new. Oh, just the schmoo everywhere. I don't know why they put so much. A little, a dabble do ya. You don't need to go all DD speed shop on it. Nice and tight U-joints. There is a little play. I wonder if that bushing in the back of the transmission's bad. Seems like it's got a lot of play up and down. We'll fix that leak and then see if that uh, slip yoke decides to leak. First things first, those seats are absolutely horrendous. So I got a little uh, trick up my sleeve to get rid of those seats and put some OEM style ones in there. But the first thing that needs to address is the seats. It's got some god awful aftermarket racing, something terrible bucket seats. And they sit up too high. So you have to have them lean back just so I can get my big fat melon in there. By the way, get your melon cover at Mordski.com. We got a dirty cap competition coming up uh, Cinco de Drinko, May 5th. So get yours worn in. You got about four months to do it. So we got two different styles. We got the Dew logo we got going here and then we got the uh, Low Life. So get those. But if you'll remember, we got a 65 Chevrolet four-door post a while back, probably a year and a half ago. And in that thing was a pair of seats. High back buckets, pretty similar to what's on the snutch rocket. And they're the same seats as this car's got. Nova and Camaro and maybe some other, probably the Trans Ams had the same seats, but this thing, the seats are missing. I hate it when people take the seats out, put the wrong seats in it, but let's take a look at these seats. So here they are. 
They even got a similar, I mean, they changed the cover over a while. You know, the foam's not in very good shape, but let's rip these things apart. Hopefully we can just clean up the frame, put some new foam on it, put some new covers, and go from there. Should be pretty straightforward, but probably not. So I'm not an interior person, but let's take these things apart and see what we can find. Getting late right to work on this video just for you, Wes. This and that plastic's gotta come off. Looks like there's a little clip here we gotta pry off in order to get the seat back from the seat bottom apart. And we're gonna be needing some new clips. Now, this should pry off of there. Now you wanna save all this stuff. I'll try to remember how it went back together. Take a couple of Phillips screws holding this back on. Ooh, look at all that mouse house. Ew. Looks like there's a couple of metal tabs up there that slides into these things. We have to clean all this stuff up. Here we go. It should be a bunch of just metal hog rings holding everything together. And the material's in such terrible shape that you don't even need to take the hog rings out. You just peel it apart. foam on the back side of the seat frame too. We're going to peel that off. I think we're going to take this in and get her sandblasted. She needs some cleanup work. Now we'll take all these hog rings off. All these hog rings are is a little metal ring. You take a pliers, hog ring pliers, and you squeeze them together and it clamps the uh, material to the backing, whatever you get, whatever you're using. Steel in this case. And inside the fabric will have this little metal rod. That's what the uh, hog rings use to hold the material to the seat frame, but the material let loose, hold that on there. Now we gotta do the same thing on the bottom. You can hear just how brittle this stuff is. So I'll snap, crackle, and pop it. There's another little metal hook right there. It looks like they got a plastic insert. So you gotta stretch it all over it. Of course, all this stuff is shrunk. Obviously, if I didn't have new covers, you'd want to save this and not cut it the way I did to make a pattern, but since these are uh, readily available, we don't have to worry about that. The mice definitely got a hold of this one. It's too far gone. Now you want to make sure all those tabs that it clips in, your springs, uh, your sliders, all that stuff's in good shape because now it's the time to fix it or find a different one. Everything looks good here, so I think we're going to get this thing all cleaned up. We'll put a coat of paint on it or some primer at least. I don't even know if these things were painted from the factory, so they rusted right out the door. Ooh, that's, uh, that's five all in a ball right there. There's this, my what sharp teeth you have. All right. Now we just gotta get the other seat back from the 38 Ford pickup. That's that boom tube's getting exhaust. Get this stuff all blasted and cleaned up and ready to go.
so we got the uh, seats all wire wheeled up we couldn't get them into the, the sandblasting shop so we got them all wire wheeled and primed and painted now we're ready to put them all back together you want to put them together for us interior does not intrigue him he says Dang it. all right let's uh, start putting these together looks like we got oer authorized seat foam it's for yeah it's a bunch of there's deluxes and standards and whatnot made in usa i got this from classic industries also got the covers from classic industries let's uh try to put a cover on see how it works or doesn't work if all else fails we just take this here uh mexican blanket or oklahoma seat cover and just pull that over the top call it good i put that down so that we don't scuff up our nice new paint job on our seat pans and our get our covers and our foam all dirty i'm a thinker look at this made in america as well i don't know what's the top what's the bottom and i don't know what to start with those two look the same this has got to be Right? Right. Ooh! He's got zippers on him. I can figure out how to run those. Except for that's going to be hideous on the back of the seat, seeing a zipper hanging out in the wide open. Just kidding. I can't figure out how to run a zipper. Hmm. Anybody who's done this before is probably going to yell at me because I'm doing it wrong. So there's this seam right here and here and here and here and there's this guy right here so i'm guessing we're probably supposed to tie this to that somehow so that it's got the right it's got the right shape i can only imagine isn't that a song i can only imagine probably not so how do we tie that to that? How would we go about doing that stuff? With hog rings, but how do we get in there? Let's go see if I can find my hog ring pliers. Look at this. A hog ring assortment. What is this? If you're interested, it's X002P6GDVN. Professional upholstery hog rings assortment kit. Here's our hog ring players. Which ones are we going to use? Probably these ones right here. So, what you do is you take your hog ring and you put it in your hog ring players and you try not to pinch your finger. You put it in there like that and squeeze. And you've successfully created a hog ring. Let's hog ring away. Looks like these are made by Parts Unlimited Interiors. Quality inspected in the shirt. I can assure you their quality is going to be better than mine. So if we start up here, we hog ring that to that. We should definitely be hiring this out. Are any of these more pony in the end? Yeah, I haven't even crimped one yet, and I'm already sick of this job. Alright. Let's do a test fit. AKA, let's put it together and never take it apart again. And the next guy can do it the right way. See if we don't hog ring these in, this kind of just hangs out there. And that's the difference between a hack like me doing an interior job and somebody who knows what they're doing. So let's spend a little time try doing that. Honestly, this job is better left to somebody with either more patience 
or more experience or a paid professional or somebody who you pay so at least you can be like you suck do it right so let's take it apart and give it a whirl i think the problem is the ends of these hog rings is dull it's just sheared off and they need to be pointy like the original ones i didn't save any yeah these original hog rings are nice and pointy on the ends so they'll pierce through that fabric these are never going to do that so we're going to have to poke a hole with a knife or something first not ideal i bet there's a youtube video on somebody who knows what they're doing on doing this you should go watch that instead So I took that scratch awl and I poked holes through there since these things won't puncture it. And got these hog rings all slid in there. And now I'm gonna try crimping them around this metal rod and this seam. We'll see what happens. I don't have very high expectations. There's no way that's gonna work. What if we try hitting it from the backside? doing it that way. Also, it would probably help if my hog ring players weren't absolute garbage. I'm sure they make quality tools, which these are not. Oh yeah, no way that's gonna work either. Somehow we magically got one. And fast forward to the finished product. Just kidding. They only do that on the Saturday morning shows. Not the Monday morning shows. You know how earlier I was joking about and cut to the uh, finished product. Yeah, that's what we did. I ran up the street to my buddy Bill's. He does upholstery part-time. He went to school for it back in the 70s. And uh, he said, yeah, swing on over. I got a little time. So I brought these over and just kind of wanted some pointers. And we started getting after it. And I said, would you be interested in just knocking these out for me? He's like, oh, yeah. So anyway, it took about, oh, I suppose two of us. We were BSing, you know, hour and a half, two hours to do this seat and uh, learned a few things. So sure enough, he sent me home with some hog rings for future projects. And uh, they got pointed ends on the good ones. So these ones are going right in the trash because without that pointed end, they are absolutely no good. And then he said a lot of the kits come with, yeah, crappy uh, hog rings like that. And he said a lot of them will come with these pliers. And this pliers is actually uh, spring loaded where my crappy one was not. And so he sent this one with me and it's got a much smaller, tighter end on the, you know. So the having spring loaded, let me show you, is it actually wants to hold the hog ring. So you're not trying to hold it with your hand. And then the hog ring pliers he used actually have, instead of being straight like this, they kind of have a 45, so you can get your hand right in there. And it was kind of a two man job, but basically I'll let you know what I learned. We started with the top, no particular reason, but he says you, you start in the middle right here and then you do the sides. There's that wire that we crimped them to and then you feel fold the edges around and then the back here was a little bit tight. So instead of using hog rings, we use zip ties and yeah, pretty straightforward. He said these uh, seat covers were really nice. He was doing some 73 CUDA seats. And I forget who they were, like UPI or something covers, but this material is way thicker. This had backing on it. He said the stitching wasn't the best on these, but he said the foam was really nice quality at fit. He said a lot of the foam doesn't actually fit the covers. And then I swung back to drop off the other seat and he'd got that CUDA cover over. These zip up the back. 
and the kudas you have to pull over and they were super loose right in here and he was using factory foam so yeah they didn't fit worth a dang so he said we really lucked out like i said same deal we started right here and then we went oh and then we went down the sides crimped that to that wire and then across the bottom and pulled it over it went pretty well it's uh i can see how it's hard on your hands getting in there and crimping it and we we missed a few times but well worth going to bill and giving him a few bucks to get this done old billy goat he's a good kid so now i just need to uh assemble this to that and put our tracks on and we should be ready to slide it in there now we gotta clean up our plastics and we decided since this has got the full back we're just gonna leave it like so as opposed to trying to clean up those plastics and looking like crap and putting those on there so nobody's ever gonna be riding in the back seat anyway stuff rides up front so let's get that assembled tech tip of the day go to somebody who knows what they're doing give them a few bucks and you'll get a lot better product oh the other neat thing he's got these little tack hammers for doing home upholstery or whatever and instead of cutting the hole for these pivots and these holes you just tap it with the hammer and then you get a perfectly round hole and you don't get cuts going every direction to tear so that was that was one of the things i learned too so it definitely pays to go to a professional or get help from a professional get professional help if you need it we definitely know i need it so anyway appreciate billy goat giving us uh, a help with some upholstery and now we're gonna get this thing put together and get these things in there i probably could have done it myself but i would have definitely had to get a different hog ring pliers i'm gonna be ordering one like he's got that angled one because that thing is slick i'm sure they're not much money and then he had these uh irwin diagonal cutters that have like a, a cam in them or a lever and that thing just just cut through these old hog rings or new hog rings that we missed on like a hot knife through butter like a hot knife through butter so i'm gonna get some of those on order because man those things are sweet and like i said if you're doing this for a living you're gonna you're gonna have the uh old arthritis because it's a lot of a lot of handwork if you know what i mean all right enough yapping Let's see if i can't get these together without tearing a hole in anything he said make sure you got a clean surface to work on so you're not getting dirt and metal shavings and grease and whatever else embedded in your new upholstery which seems kind of obvious but you never know oh we got to put our pivot bolts in or our stop bolts these guys are what stops it and what latches it so I'm gonna go grab a Torx, thread these in. While I was over at Billy Goats, I looked at the uh, invoice on the box for these things. And with shipping, it was about 850 bucks for four pieces of foam and two covers. So another reason, spend a couple hundred bucks, have somebody who knows what they're doing help you out because you could screw up, you know, several hundred dollars of the material pretty quick. But if you take your time and your patience, you'll probably be just fine. All oh, the other thing is, you don't want to use plastic trash bags, but get some really thin plastic material that we put over the top of the seat here. So when you're pulling it all over, it, it wants to bind on the foam. So that's kind of like a lubricant. It'll actually slide on that plastic. And then you work this around a bunch of his hands. Like I said, it's a lot of freaking handwork. I bet old Billy Goat's got some strong hands. You wouldn't want him getting a hold of you. There we go, now we just gotta straighten out our retaining clip there and pound that over those pivot joints that we just worked on. One of these, we're gonna have to find another one because we're short. We're short two of them. So, get that together. Where do you put that seat in? Well, once you get seat track on. Use a little Lixie here to straighten her out. Maybe I'll get a socket to tap over it. Get her in place. There we go. I don't know what the heck these clips are called, but we're gonna have to find some. There we go. Which way did these go on now? Must have been like this. Your upholstery individuals will greatly appreciate it if you uh, take the seats to them complete and not disassembled. That's another uh, thing I learned.
Alrighty then, let's get those hideous seats out of there. Put these freshly restored ones. I feel like there's a cover that's supposed to go right there. Bill said, I think you're missing something, but yeah. Guess we're just gonna have to deal with it for now. Oh yeah, there's the difference. The seat bottoms that we got. The old ones came over the top. The new ones don't. So, we'll probably have to get some different bottoms at some point. Oh well. Nobody's ever going to notice from the back seat. Look at this, you can't even tip the seat ahead without hitting the roof. So in order for somebody to get in the back seat, you got to bash the headrest against the uh, headliner. What the French. Let me move the visor ahead so I can slide the seat ahead. So terrible. Here's what we got for mounts. A couple of 516 bolts going through the floor through nothing. Surprisingly, these seat risers have three different adjustments and they have it on the lowest one. So you could actually move it up to the highest one and gain some headroom, but we definitely aren't doing that. All right, let's get these out of here and take a look at them, throw them on the Facebook marketplace so we never have to see them again, or maybe just burn them. Great that seat looks. And look at how it matches the back seat. Heck yeah. You can see just how much taller these things are. These things are like, they're gonna be eight, 10 inches taller. Looks like these are Pro Cars by Scat. I looked it up on the old interwebs and these things are like 350 bucks on the, uh, I think it was Speedway Motors. And then you gotta buy these uh, adapter brackets, which it's handy that they make those for different applications, but. So, for slightly more than what they had into these, they could have rebuilt their own seats and it all would have matched. I don't know if you noticed, but when I tilted this thing ahead to take the bolts out of the back, it, it hit the headliner. That's how high these things sat, just terrible. All right, I got this one back from Billy Goat. Let's get her slammed in there. Uh, when I took that passenger seat out, I found the culprit for our uh, stink. Where did I throw that? Yep, there it is, the mothballs. Definitely not breath mints. They should just quit making those things. Found some other goodies in there. A hardware hank bag with some screws, no drugs, which is kind of surprising for a Camaro from the big city of Enderline. And a Fox Racing shirt in size medium, probably. Nope, it's a large. It's a grande, new shop rag. All right, let's get this slid in there. Carry on with our lives. Now that our seat's in, let's go on the bottom side, fix a couple leaks. First one here is our Speedo output. So we're gonna take a pliers and pop that off and then take a 10 millimeter and take that bolt out. And then we'll uh, take that insert out of there and stick some new seals on it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Then when we get all done, we'll wipe it all down so that we know if it's a new leak or residual oil. I'm guessing the speedometer was not working. There's a uh, little kinky action going on there and not the type that DD Speed Shop is used to. Guess we'll be looking for a speedo cable. Settle down, Greta. How dare you! Oh, yeah. So here's our Speedo input thinger, majigger. There's this seal in the middle that goes around the Speedo gear shaft, and then there's O-ring on the outside. Pretty straightforward. Knock that out, knock that in, scoop that out, put a new one on there. Good to go. Let's see what we got here. For seals. Apparently there's genders on these. We got black ones and pink. Since it's a Camaro, we're definitely gonna go with the pink. 
Oh, this has got a little snap ring in there, it looks like. Pew! Oh, this is just the rubber style. This has actually got a steel uh, insert. No way that's going to fit in there. I guess we're going to have to go find a different one to slide in there. And then we'll throw this on the shelf for a rainy day once we get the right seal for it. I've never seen one with a snap ring like that before. Learn something new every day. So I got this new replacement housing. You can buy them already loaded with the inner seal and the outer seal ready to go. So we're just going to utilize that thing. And all you got to do is, is line up that little notch right there with this little metal tab. And that's what retains it in there. And the finishing touch, we're just going to nip this end of this speedo cable off so it don't get in our way. Maybe. Just kidding. Got it. All right, hopefully that resolved that leak. Another thing I noticed when I was down here is these washers should not be on starter bolts. We're going to take those out and see if they're actually, in fact, starter bolts or just some random 3 8 bolt somebody put in there. Sure enough, just a regular 3 8 bolt. In case you didn't know, here's your starter bolt. It's got this knurling down here and then they got this flange head built on them. Some of them don't have the flange, but you gotta have that knurling. That's where it sits in the block. Otherwise, these style bolts, regular style bolts, will shear right off and then you get to drill and tap, try to extract that from the block. And that's no fun. I wonder if this one will even come out with that uh, header there. Guess we're gonna find out. Of course you can't get that bolt out with the headers in place. I've never told you how much I thoroughly enjoy headers. But at least that one was a true starter bolt. It shouldn't have that washer, so we're gonna get rid of that. There you go, take care of your starter and your starter will take care of you. So one more thing I noticed, these torque converter bolts, they're not long enough. They did put locking bolts, but it's only going about halfway through the threads. So let's take those out of there and put the right bolts in. Let's count how much it's held on by. How are we gonna do this? There's a half a turn, a full turn, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. I don't even think it was held on by three. One, two, three. So here's the deal he came up with. I went and checked other torque converter bolts that I know are factory OEM, and they are the same length. So what I've determined is this is a thicker flange on this aftermarket smaller torque converter. And you can see just how much thread sticks through. So we're gonna get some longer bolts. Hopefully that resolves it. All right, we got some longer 3 ace bolts. Fine thread, of course. I'm gonna put them in from the other direction. It seems like that's the way I remember them going from the factory. Some of these bolts are metric, some are coarse thread, some are fine thread, some have flange heads, some don't. There's a lot of variables over the years, but you definitely don't want them too long and you don't want them too short, you want them just right. And that's just right. You don't want these things coming loose, that's a bad day and makes a bunch of noise and then you don't move. We got a couple threads sticking through there, perfect. We're going to use uh, El Jefe. My name is Jeff. Spin this thing around and get the other two. And some of them actually have the threaded nut or nut or whatever you want to call it welded to the torque converter. So you don't even have to hold the nut. Those are the ones you want. For reference, you versus the guy she told you not to worry about. This one is about 
don't know, three eighths or a half inch longer. There, I like that much better. I know, I'm a hardware nerd. And since we cooked the rear end on the D100 a couple weeks ago, let's check the diff, make sure that it's not uh, low on oil. So we don't want to be doing that again, do we, Duff? Get ourselves a little zip tie to use as a dipstick. It's a zip stick. Ooh, it's rusty. And that is like water. All right. We're definitely going to be draining a diff. Glad we checked that. So since we stuck our zip stick in the rear end and it looks like solid water, let's pull this cover off and drain whatever's in there. So we don't want to burn up two rear ends in three weeks. I guess we'll get to find out what gear ratio it is. Has a plus side. That's some good silicone. Oh yeah, milkshake. Oh, that is some rusty brown nasty stuff. Yeah, a lot of rust action in there. Definitely an open one wheel peel. Put a neutral, spun this thing over. It's got GM part number 3984831. Tooth count 12 and 41. Looks like it was built January of 78. So this has been replaced because obviously this is newer than the car. No, this is a 78, this is the original one. Anyway, if you take 41 and you divide it by 12, you get a 342 ratio. So actually a pretty good ratio. Everything seems to be in pretty decent shape in there. A little wear on the spider is not bad. The cross pin is nice and tight it seems like. All right, we're gonna let this thing drip dry and then we'll get our super scraper. SS1 available at Mordski.com and uh, clean this thing up, put a little right stuff adhesive on it and refill it with some fresh 8090. Yeah, there's definitely some some water in there. The old 8090 should not run off your finger like that. And it's not synthetic, I can guarantee that. It doesn't smell like 8090 either. Tech tip of the day, always check your diff. So upon further inspection, there is some pitting going on in that gear. It'll probably run for a long time like that, but some new uh, side gears, spider gears, whatever, should definitely be in this thing's future. I'll take a look at the rest and see what I find. Maybe that's why they got the new stereo in there. That stereo covers up the howling of the rear end. And there's a couple more that are a little bit worn, but that's the only one that's... Soup. Oh, never mind. There's two that are three, three that are pretty chewy. But this side looks good so far, anyway. And those are pretty easy to put in. You just take this bolt out, take the cross pin out, uh, push the axle shafts in, pop the C clips out, change out those side gears and the spider gears. Pretty freaking easy. I just don't have those on hand, so we won't be doing it. Not this week anyway. We got our diff cover all cleaned up. You can see where the water line was or where the oil line was, whatever. And I got some uh, right stuff by Permatex, not a paid sponsor. Schmood on there. Not everywhere like DD Speed Shop. Look at that. When you use this stuff, the right stuff, 
it matches instead of having obnoxious blue or orange or red. Right stuff, I use it on frickin' everything. It's the way to go. Except for it's no fun to take apart because that's how good it is. All right, let's get some bolts in here and snug it up. We'll be ready for some new 8090. The beauty of doing what we're doing here where we're just throwing some fresh oil in it and not fixing those side gears is hopefully that oil will flush the diff just a little bit when we uh, open it up the next time. Get some of that rust and crud out of there. 8090s generally pretty low cost, so it'll be a cheap flush. But ideally we would just throw some new uh, side gears in it right now and not have to drain it twice. But we don't have any on hand. Tech tip of the day, that's how you tell if you got a 12 volt or a 10 volt. If they got a bolt in the bottom, it's 10 volt. If the two bottom bolts are staggered, it's a 12 volt. Or if you can't remember that, you can just count them all. Or if you're real good and can cut it in half, and just count five, and it's 10 volt. If you count six, it's 12 volt. As you're all probably well aware, the torque thrust is my favorite wheel combination, but I'm just not feeling it on this car. And I like the dirty mags better. And we gotta make this car our own, so got a little trick up our sleeves. So we're gonna take these front tires and mount on these other wheels. Got the other rear wheels and tires mounted up because the 245 just ain't cutting it. So I think we're gonna put a 275 60 on the back. Should be able to clear that. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you what we got up our sleeve. Right? Torque thrust. We'll even put the white letters out. Yeah? You're kind of looking away. It's moderately acceptable in muscle cars, I believe. So what we got here is a factory Z28 15 by seven. There's some different names for them, honeycomb, whatever, but you gotta use the right lug nuts with these things. Let me show you what they look like. So we got these from our pals at Lug Nut Guys, seven sixteenths. They got this flange around there, and then they got this shank for a pilot. This is what you gotta run. Same thing on the uh, 1979 Trans Am, the old uh, Dirt Reynolds, This the factory honeycomb wheels. Would we'll use this on there as well. I just really like the look of these and it kind of changes the car up and sticks with the Z28 faux theme. You can buy different center caps. You can buy new ones that say, you know, probably to have Berlinetta or a Camaro or what have you, but we're leaving the Z28 ones in here. This is a painted wheel, so you could get these refurbished if you wanted. These are actually in really nice shape and should clean up pretty good. And since we got BF goodies on the back and, uh, some mismatched ones in the back, probably mile stars. That's what we usually get. We're leaving the white letters in because I don't like white letters that don't match. And I, I think we need more tire than the uh, 245 that's on there now. So we're going with black walls out. Ah, oh, yeah, that 275 fills out the wheel well way better than the old 245. Let's get the other side swapped out too. And since we got a 275-60 on the back of Dirt Reynolds, we know that they're going to clear on this thing. If you need lug nuts for your car, go check out Lug Nut Guys on eBay or at their website, lugnutguys.com. Use promo code Mortsky for free shipping on all orders under 20 bucks. And tell them to send a decal with you. He's, old Jeff's being a little stingy on the stickers, so... If you use promo code Mortsky, he'll surely send you a decal with it. 
Do it, Jeff. Do it. Everyone loves decals for their toolboxes. And if you need decals for your toolbox, hit us up. At Mortski.com, we got all kinds of decals. We got White Lightning. We got Dirt Reynolds. If you're the F-body aficionado, which you probably are if you're watching this. We got the Cowboy Caddy. Caddy. Yeah, we named, we, named, we got them all. All right, back to work. Safety third, right, Duff? We got some Pilot M I-1010 replacement lenses. Of course, it says exact fit and quality. Well, they weren't an exact fit. Had to shave them down a little bit. And then they come with this cheap glue that's probably worse than what the original ones were. So I used some uh, 3M VHB. Let's see if that'll hold them on there. All right, stay there, because we don't need seven years of bad luck. All right, there we go, mirrors are done. Look at what we found in that trunk. Everything we need, the stock torque converter, a really nice new fan clutch, another electric fan, another aluminum radiator, and even a reproduction shroud made in USA. Let's see what we can make of all this stuff. Looks like some vintage air parts, windshield washer reservoir. Let's uh, put that fan on there. Made in USA? Dang, all the good stuff. There we go, got our upper radiator hose clocked differently so it's not gonna rub on our AC compressor clutch. We really should verify that it's overheating. First step, verify the customer complaint. We're, we're just gonna get rid of this electric fan menagerie anyway. Duff says it's gotta go. Right, Duff? Electric fans? Okay. He says they gotta go. He nodded in agreement. See if this cute little fan shroud fits. Uh, not so much. It can't work anyway, because the notch for where the radiator hose goes is never gonna line up with the radiator hose. So, wrong application. There we go, one clutch fan installed. I think a fan shroud would help out a lot, but we're not gonna go digging through the snow banks, see if we can find one. I still have that red 74 Camaro with the 400 in it that we were uh, doing donuts in. But I don't know if the fan shroud is any good on that car, and I don't know if it's the same. And like I said, I feel like it's not worth chasing down. I, I think this thing is gonna move plenty of air to cool this thing, and it should be new. New radiator, new hoses, new water pump, all that stuff. Could be the thermostat upside down. Could be timing. Could be a head gasket, or a cracked head, or a cracked block, or anything else. But first thing I gotta do is verify it before we uh, get too far, so. I bet I could see an upside down thermostat. Uh, the fan was loose from the clutch, and you can see the way they had it installed was the wrong way. So maybe they tried it one way and then tried it the other way. I don't know, maybe it was installed backwards from the factory, but it was loose from the clutch. 
I'm gonna pull it out of the trunk so we double checked. Hopefully it's right, but now we gotta deal with the no crank issue. So let's dig into that. Hopefully it's a neutral safety switch. This is what we found in the car for the fan wiring. They just had a switch. Little tiny, God, what is this thing? It can't be rated for anything. And then not only did they use too small of a switch, they didn't have a relay, and you gotta have a relay when you're pulling that many amps. So, just hanging underneath the dash. It was at least hired, hired, wired to ignition power, so it wouldn't run the battery dead. But let's see what we got going on here with our uh, no crank. So if I just turn the key, she'll crank over now, but if I pull the shifter back ever so slightly, nothing. There's a neutral safety switch on the column that should be hooked up with a rod up there. That's the way it was in my 74 Camaro. But this doesn't have that. I feel like it's in here somewhere. So let's pull this plate off. Let's see if we can access that. Good news is I found the glove box in the trunk. And I'm guessing this was an ashtray probably? Who knows? A factory temp gauge. Looks like she gets warm about 235 clock factory tack with a red line of five grand 130 mile an hour speedometer oh yeah oh it's got the z28 wheel as well this looks like a reproduction just by the condition that it's in when it's still sticky the reproduction ones must be sticky too oh and i noticed we're missing the window crank on the other side probably gonna want to get that fixed oh we got ac we don't need no window cranks we got the center console loose here, and here's what I found underneath. Two proximity switches. That is definitely not factory GM stuff. There's no adjustment. It looks like they kind of welded a washer as an eccentric, and that's the neutral. And this one up front is park. And yeah, short of putting a larger bolt in there to push on this guy. I don't know what we can do. They should have slotted this stuff. They should have done it the right way. And by the right way, there should be a shift linkage on these cars that goes from the transmission up to the steering column, and then it hooks to the shift collar on, on where your column shifted, shiftingness would be. And there's a neutral safety switch down at the bottom of the column. And apparently these guys were not aware of that or they were missing parts or, this must have been a really long project. By the time they got it together, they couldn't figure out how to make it run, so they needed a neutral safety switch. So I guess that, at least they didn't bypass it. This would be a good anti-theft system. But uh, yeah, there should be a rod that, that ties the transmission to the uh, steering column, even though that this car doesn't have a column shifter. And the neutral safety switch is still down there at the bottom of the column because that's where I started and I was going to go adjust it because that neutral safety switch has some adjustment. And this goofy setup that they have does not. So hackery bites us once again. We're just going to leave it. Uh, there again, if I was going to go further with this car, I would go grab that red car and steal the uh, linkages, run it up to the column, hook it all up, rewire it. But we're not. It'll be fine. It's, it's better to have this than no neutral safety switch at all. So I'm going to go ahead and put this entire freaking console back together. What a waste of time. <sighs> well, it just dawned on me as I was putting this shifter cover back on. That was the other reason for having the rod tied to the steering column for the neutral safety switch is when the car was in the lock position, you couldn't run the shifter. So you had to take this out of lock and to run, and then it would allow that arm down there to move, which is tied to this arm. So, yeah, somebody could steal this car if they put it neutral and pushed it down the street and the steering wheel was straight because they couldn't steer it without the keys. But anywho, that's the other reason that that rod needs to be put back in this car so that you can uh, not shift it when the key is in the lock position. The more you know. Glad Ola Tiffany told me about that. She's a nice gal. She spent a lot of time in the back seat of one of these. Rumor has it. So we got this thing fired up and uh, determined that the engine rotates clockwise when looking from the front. Should have known this, but I couldn't remember. 
50-50, 90 year old, 50-50 odds, you're wrong 90% of the time. But check this out. I parked this car in, I don't know, August, something like that. And uh, look what the mice did just in that amount of time. I guess we should have had a tailpipe cam on this car. Yeah, we've had quite the most problem this fall, but anywho. So yeah, like I was saying, the fan turns clockwise when you're looking from the front. And so this thing, it, sh it says this side towards the radiator. So if you had this side towards the radiator, it's gonna be rotating the wrong way. It's gonna be grabbing air with this lip, pulling it towards that lip, and pulling it towards the, just kidding. When you rotate it backwards, it's gonna push air forward. So you think, oh, that's easy enough. Just flip around, right? Nope, same deal. It's pushing it forward. What a silly design. And the other thing I don't like about it is this has got the uh, notched holes right here for where it bolts to the water pump, which is fine, but I'd rather have it like the OEM where it's just straight up holes. Uh, I think this is a six blade and this is a five, but if it was good enough from the factory, it should be good enough for this thing. Also, the diameter of this one I dug out of my stash is about an inch bigger diameter. Well, maybe even an inch and a half. So we're gonna pull a little bit more air. We're gonna throw this guy on there because this thing was turning backwards no matter what. Silliness. Let's get this on there and hopefully that resolves all the heating issues because yeah, I bet they tr tried running this for a while and of course it overheated because you're trying to push air against the uh, air that's going through there when you're going down the road. And I would have thought if you took a fan blade and flipped it this way, it would uh, reverse it, but apparently it does not. Just blows my mind. Mind blown. And of course, this bolt pattern is different. I wonder if we can just take this fan and put it on that clutch. No way that'll work either. Well, sure enough, it bolted onto the new old fan clutch, so that's what we're gonna run. <laughs> The other thing I noticed when it was running was how much this AC belt is dancing around. And the problem with this AC belt is it goes around the bottom pulley, around the water pump pulley, over the AC compressor, and then just barely kind of skims the edge of the power steering pulley. And it should be running in this front groove, but you can tell by the shininess, it's running in the back groove. So it's running crooked. I would like, because we got two grooves on that bottom pulley, to run... A separate belt for the power steering and then use this one as well but the problem is that inside groove on the crankshaft pulley has a big old whammo to it Whammy! but i think that's the same pulley as our 4.3 had and that uh little 86 chevy pickup so i'm gonna see if i can find that pulley before i get crazy and We'll see if we can swap that pulley and then we'll have to find a belt for the power steering and then we'll uh, readjust this thing. Yeah, this whole thing just kind of just dancing around out there. I should not be able to wiggle that thing around with my hand, but I guess that's how Vintage Air designed it. I think a large portion of it comes from the headers. These should bolt to the manifold so they shouldn't have this big long bolt with that spacer out there should be mounted right to the manifold so headers ruining our lives once again All right, we got the uh, crankshaft pulley off of there. I thought I was gonna grab the one off that 86 Chevy pickup. I totally forgot that we took it off the 4.3 and put it right on the 350. So I didn't have a spare one around. They only used this pulley setup for a couple of years. And then they went to a full on serpentine setup. Some guys get mad when I call this a serpentine. It's, a, it's actually a flat belt because it doesn't go over a tensioner or something like that. But anyway. We might have one, but it's negative six degrees this morning, so I'm not about to go outside and open hoods and steal one off a vehicle. You can see they put a little hooey on the flat belt groove. It's pretty good though. 
there's a big old whammy there and it probably would run just fine without it or without doing anything but i think we'll take a file or a grinder clean that up a little bit and try pounding that down a hair i don't know what happened there somebody must have lifted up on it with a jack or something or dropped it who knows but it's got an aftermarket crank bolt in it so i mean at least it's not going to fly off this chunk might after we bang on it though Lixie the persuader over here oh my word yeah they don't want to move should we try the press stuff I think that's going to be good enough for the girls we go with. Maybe a couple more taps. I would recommend finding a different pulley. Should be uh, pretty cheap and plentiful. Body by Mortsky. Wow, I'm actually impressed with myself. Until it throws the belt off, takes all the other belts off. We shall see. I tell you what, this rabbit hole just keeps getting deeper and deeper, but it's, it's almost turning into a foxhole. Let me show you what we got going on here. So after doing a little digging, we came up with this 15 395 belt, which fits, but it just barely grazes the back of this water pump pulley. So why is that? Because there's no adjustment on the water pump pulley or the crank pulley. You, you kind of made up to that service and get what you get. But the power steering pulley is pressed on and just eyeballing it, you know, using the, the uh, Pot County Eagle Eye. It's a uh, little cattywampus. This bolt and washer should not be in here. So let's pull that out. It should be pretty close to flush, the edge of this pulley with the, uh, what do you call it, the shaft on the pump. So let's pop that out of there. We'll see what we got going on, but I think we got to get that pressed in further. So you use this bolt or a similar tool to draw this pulley in. And maybe they just didn't draw it in tight enough. Or maybe it's right where it needs to be and the bracketry is all wrong. Sure enough, it looks like it's flush. So we're going to have to take a look and see if our bracketry is correct. Or what we got going on here? I think our culprit may have uh, reared its ugly little heads. Plural. That's a word. Look it up. The old screwed by Mortsky Repair magnetic screwdriver makes an excellent pointer as well. This 3 8 bolt goes through the accessory hole into the head. See these stack of washers? How many is there, folks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, that's one, two, three. Ah, ah, ah. So these eight washers are pushing the top of this bracket out, which is pushing the pulley out, which is causing this belt to rub on the backside of this pulley right here. So let's take a couple of them washers out, shim it in. Also, this bracket right here is for the air conditioning bracket. And I feel like it should probably be bolted in more places than one and there's multiple bolt holes. So once we get this situation figured out, we're going to uh, probably take some bolts loose and see if we can't get it to snag a couple of bolts on the head or holes, I should say. And the Cyclops is dead. We'll charge him up. Another thing that I've noticed while working on here is this alternator bracket. It's been cut off. And this bracket should wrap around over into here and then catch on, I believe, this bolt hole right here. I don't know why they cut it off. To get the fuel line through, maybe. Seems like a terrible idea, but it's pretty rigid for the time being. But I would suggest getting the right one. This is just a lot of stuff you find on cars that have been modified, unfortunately. GM knew what they were doing for the most part. Or Ford or 
whoever we're referencing. So you're not making it better. Route your fuel line the way it should be routed. I did a little digging. This is the bracket that came off of the head up here. You can see that bolt hole is too big and it's oblonged out. And that's what they had tying to the power steering pump. Went and looked at, what do we call that thing? Casper, I guess. And this is the bracket we should have. It should catch the front lower bolt hole ahead. This should go through the manifold, so headers are biting us again. And then it's got this slotted area back here. So we're gonna have to make a bushing to go between the header and uh, this bracket and then I check to see the thickness of the spacer up here so we got the right thickness spacer so that should resolve all our power steering issues right there hopefully and then we need to uh, work our way upstream and get this AC compressor done so first things first I'm gonna get this thing bolted up and measure and make us a spacer All right, we got just a C hair of clearance between the back of this pulley and the belt. I don't know what a C hair is, but there's, there's probably not enough room for a B hair, but there's room for a C hair. All I did was, you know, get this factory OEM bracket and we made this little three ace bushing, cut her down so that that's spaced the same space that it would be if it had headers or manifolds on it, now that we got headers. And then we got this bolt back here to snug it up. So now we got to figure out what we got to do to mount this AC compressor from Vintage Air. And then we got to run that belt and we should be good to go. And then, like I said, other than this bushing here that we had to have for headers, it's all factory OEM stuff. And that GM stuff's designed to run a million miles. There's stuff out there with 250 plus thousand miles on it. So this is going to work just fine. Plus if the AC belt ever lets loose, we're still going to have power steering. Uh, if you're curious, it's a 15380. No, 15385 is the belt part number we're using there. All right, let's uh, work on the AC bracket next. All right, we're finished with V-belts. I just cut a little 7 8 inch spacer to go on the outside of the spacer. We just made it for the power steering so that the uh, AC compressor bracket is spaced out properly. And so V-belts are all done. Now we just gotta do this flat belt and digging through my stash, I found the right bracket. So let's take that thing off, the ugly one that's on there, put the right one on here. I don't see why it's gonna be a problem. And it'll also give us a spot to tie our AC compressor hoses to. So double whammy, everybody wins. Before we do that, just, just a quick note, accessory brackets, they're a pain. They make a gazillion different ones, GM. So if you dug into some other stuff like, you know, Fords or Mopars or two cylinders, four cylinders, six cylinders, what have you, AC, power steering, smog pump, all that stuff. There's a million combinations and you can really dig deep into a rabbit hole, but this is something that is going to plague you forever if you don't take care of it right off the bat. All this stuff's moving, it's vibrating, it's got a load on it, it's all designed to work together. And if you're missing one component, you're going to wear belts and pulleys and crack brackets and it's just going to be a giant pain so anybody who's dealt with this knows what i mean and the aftermarket stuff i mean the, the low end stuff isn't that good you can buy some aftermarket really nice stuff but you pay up for it but i really like the oem stuff it's getting harder and harder to find all the time but i'm glad i hung on to a bunch of this stuff to make this all work so let's get this snugged back together so that we can not have any more problems not throw any belts everything's going to be great grand wonderful good great grand wonderful so here's what this upper bracket's supposed to look like i believe this is even the same part number and everything it's got that little notch right there and then this notch right here and then like i said it bolts to the intake it should hopefully maybe that intake boss is higher Ooh, that might be the problem we'll dig into it check it out not only is this bracket going to give us a spot to put a clamp around these hoses and hold them but 
This bolt right here should also hold the ground cable for the battery. Looks like they got it hooked up to the block right now, which is fine, but if you wanted to keep it all OEM, that's where it's supposed to go. Finishing step, putting our fan and alternator belt on. There you go, look at how nice that bracket looks. We got our P-clip up here holding our AC hoses so they ain't flopping around. Speaking of hoses, let's hook up some heater hoses. It was negative six this morning when I went to lunch. It's zero degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get some heat in this thing so we don't freeze while we're out test driving it. So what we're gonna do is, is right here on the water pump, there's a fitting there. We're gonna put a barb fitting on this and then there's one on the intake factory from the GM. This should be five eighths and three quarter. I'm guessing this aftermarket is just one or the other. There's not a certain size for the return and the pressure. So I think we're just gonna have to get two, I assume, five eighths heater fittings, but let's dig these out of the fender and find out. I would say that's three quarter. All right, there you have it. Probably could throw a zip tie around those two right there. So this guy just flopping in the wind, but they're not gonna rub on anything either way. But I just barely bumped this breather thinger and the whole lid, chrome lid fell right off. Oh, you gotta love aftermarket chrome parts, don't you? So now I gotta figure out how to get this thing out of there and either replace it or try gluing it back together. Ah, I hate cheesy chrome aftermarket stuff. I'd much rather have the uh, stamp steel GM valve covers. These center bolt designs seal up so much better than the earlier perimeter bolt design. And then open element air cleaners, you can see just from the cotton trees and the cattails around here, they just get loaded with crap. And it's probably not making any more horsepower than the stock one. So... Add that to the list of things to fix. But we should have heat. Should. We're going to need to put some coolant in here as well. Probably some ATF. Seems how we let some out when we pulled that speedometer gear. Well, this is weird. We got a car with heat. It's one degree out. I'll turn the heat on low. I don't know why, but my head is hitting the ceiling. I don't know if it's this aftermarket headliner or what. Temp seems to be sitting right at 190. It must have a 190 thermostat in it. It sounds pretty dang good. Brakes feel good. Should, because everything's new. Tack doesn't work. We know the speedometer's not gonna work. It says we got an eighth of a tank of fuel. So first thing we're gonna do is go hit up a gas pump, if we make it that far. And my head keeps hitting the roof. So it's gotta be this headliner or something. Both the Bosch aftermarket temp gauge and the stock gauge appear to be working, so we can probably get rid of that Bosch gauge. I'm guessing the backwards fan and or the poorly wired electric fans were causing their overheating issues. Nice smooth shift a second. Goes down the road nice and straight. Not a bunch of wind noise, which is something you really got to deal with in these cars because they're a frameless window so I'm guessing all those new seals they put in there plus we got a nasty north wind crosswind trying to beat through the window so that's good yeah the heater works awesome in here they put that aftermarket gauge right at my kneecap well, actually my calf so you got to move your leg out of the way and turn your head to see it but like I said, the one in the dash appears to be working, so that's what I would go with. It'd be cool if the tack works. But I, the needle spins around, and then it stops back between the P and the M and RPM, so I don't know what's going on there. 
I was gonna say it could be because it's attack for points and this is an electronic ignition, but 78 and this should have been electronic anyway. So who knows what's going on there? Checked all the lights. Pretty much everything except the license plate light is working. We got blinkers, tail lights. I guess I didn't check out the reverse lights, but we don't plan to back up, do we, Duff? Duff's doing an excellent job of ruining my brand new seats that we got over a thousand dollars into. But whatever. We can't just leave you here, can we? Yeah. Shifts into third. Most on the road, good. Like I said, with those 275 60s, so we got an even taller tire now, so this thing should sail down the road pretty good. One thing with changing that tire size, uh, if you gotta put a speedo cable or reseal that speedo, you could put a different gear in there, and or the gear on the back of the uh, transmission, you gotta pull that. I think you gotta pull the tail housing to do that. But you can change the gears in there, and that way you get the correct speed on your speedometer, because obviously these tires are a little bit taller than what was on here. And who knows if what was on here is the same size as what the factory would have had. Anyway, so, not like the speedometer was probably right when we started. All of the ice fishermen dragging their four-wheelers and their fish shacks around. That sounds miserable. Handsome Rob, he's out ice fishing today. They took vacation to go do that. Alkali or something like that. And uh, he sent a Snapchat. It's negative 12 degrees there. Not a hobby I want to take up. Duff, did you bring your credit card to fill up the tank? Good news is it's dry around here right now, so they haven't been putting salt on the roads because salt is what makes these things rust out in the winter time. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't be damaging the body today by driving her up and down the asphalt. Yeah, that Edelbrock, she is smooth. Apparently, I need F bodies of T-top so I can fit in them. All right, I'm gonna go put petrol in. You just hang out here. God, you're getting that seat all dirty. Uh, get a dog, they said. Just kidding, you're the best stuff. It's way too cold to sit out there and pump gas. Let's see if our fuel gauge goes up. What is gas? I saw it was like 257 the other day. You can't afford not to drive a big block with a direct drive transmission. Oh yeah, she's going up. We're already to three eighths of a tank. It's gotta be this molded headliner. This is ridiculous. Probably should have brought a jacket and some gloves on, Duff. Get your Mortsky repair hoodie and Mortsky repair uh, beanie cap so you're prepared for uh, stalls on the side of the road when it's cold out at mortski.com. We got all kinds of other stuff if you're from somewhere where it's warm. Get yourself a banner to fly in your shop. All right, she's full. 14.4 gallons, 37 bucks. Look at this stuff. Seat belts, seat belts. Do they work? Sure enough, put yours on. And all the tacks doing the hey thing. Must have something to do with they must have it wired into the door switch or something because every time you open and close the door it makes a lap around the world. Ooh. I thought those exhaust pipes rubbing. Probably wasn't. Oh, we caught the three o'clock shift change slash all the kiddos leaving school, so all the traffic. Don't worry, the cops right there. Don't make eye contact Duff. Making sure all the kiddos get across the street safely. We're far enough away from the cop that we can mash it. I wouldn't say it throws you back in the seat. No funny rattles or nothing when you go over the railroad tracks. The suspension's tight, steering's tight, doors closed tight. This thing's She's pretty good, needs a few finishing touches on the interior. I see it's missing the uh, cigarette lighter, ashtray. Gotta put that radio in there, which instead of cutting it up for a CD player, like they got in here, I'd put like a retro sound or whatever they are, or just a stock AM radio. They make so much, so many different things that look original appearing and you can get Bluetooth and whatnot. That would be the way I'd go. 
No, I don't think you can get a glove box in there with the vintage air. So you just gotta put the door back in place. We have a little wiring under there. Yeah, other than that, the interior's pretty good. Unless you're tall like me and your head is on the headliner. If you're like 5'7", five, 5'8", five, this car is gonna be perfect for you. If you wanna own this thing, price and availability listed down in the video description as always. Uh, hit us up, repair at gmail.com. I definitely am not keeping this car. It's too nice to just sit around outside and it's not something I feel like I need to own. So, yeah. It's just gonna rot away in the yard, so somebody might as well buy it. Um, this car is not perfect by any means. I showed you. I show all the bad parts. I'm a pessimist. This car is actually a really, really good car. There's an absolute ton of new parts on this thing. Uh, there's not a lot that like immediately needs to be done, but there's a few little things. Like I put a fan shroud on it. That rear end's gonna need attention at some point. I can't hear it making any noise right now. If we wouldn't open that up and look at it, I think probably would have made another 30,000 miles. Who knows, but mechanically, this thing's good. Get the speedo and the tack working. Runs nice and cool down the road. 180. Heat smokes you out of here. I can hear the AC compressor clicking on and off because we got the defrost going, so that's all functioning. It's got that 86 Endure uh, one piece rear main seal engine with a good valve cover, so like that thing doesn't leak the leak on the transmission rear end seemed nice and dry new radiator new fuel tank new exhaust new tires new brakes all new interior newish paint i would put a hood on it it's cracked by the latch and it's cracked where those guys poked a hole through the uh the air cleaner bolt so i would i would i'd probably look for a different hood this one's full of mud and a good body guy should be able to match this color pretty easy. Other than that, on the outside, it's pretty good. I think it would look good with some stripes or pinstripes or something just to break it up because there's so much blue. And I kind of think white walls would look good on this car. Don't hold me to it, but it's just so much blue and then with the black walls, the, the white walls before kind of made it pop. But I do like these wheels on here. They're good. By the way, did you check the lug nut stuff? Yeah, hopefully those don't come loose on us. They could maybe come down like a, a half inch on the front, but I like my stuff low. These cars always kind of do sit a little bit higher in the front. But other than that, I mean, there's probably a couple other little fiddly things. This thing's a really, really good car. These, these cars are getting up there in price, so I mean, it's only gonna go up in value if you take care of it. I got the Speedo app out. We're just rolling down the road. 65 mile an hour. Loves it. It's got a clock, temp, voltage, and fuel gauge. And then the tack and the Speedo. I wish it had an oil pressure gauge instead of a clock. I'm guessing the clock doesn't work. But yeah, it must just have a dummy light somewhere for the oil pressure gauge. There the tack started spinning around again. Who knows what's going on there. Come to think of it, when I was looking at the distributor, I feel like there wasn't even a wire hooked to the distributor in the tack portion on the pin, the spade, whatever. So, who knows? Hey, there goes the dammit. Headed home for the weekend. Oh, she gets up in boogies. I don't know why they put the stall converter in it. To, to me, a stall converter is for engines with big cams, which I don't think this has, and for like drag racing. And who's gonna go drag racing with a 342 one wheel peel? I don't, I don't get why people spend their money on the things that they spend their money on. I mean, maybe that's what he was doing, was going drag racing. And that's why they had the super sweet racing seats in here. Yeah, that could be it think though. Who knows? Those are the railroad tracks.
Max Nice. So we got that going for us anyway. The electric choke works, the high idle works. You just can't go wrong with these Edelbrocks. They're like an all around daily driver, out of the box, turnkey, go. Duff, you're breathing so hard over there that you're kind of fogging up the window on your side. You know that? Settle down a bit. Think she'll spin it around the corner? Oh yeah! Woo! Dang. I think if I were to keep this car, I would go through that rear end, put spider gears, and probably put a different carrier in it so you can get uh, two wheel feel. I mean, if you got a muscle car, you can't you can't have a open rear end, can you, Duff? Then I guess you can, but that's the other reason we're not keeping this. We got dirt rentals. That thing is just perfectly crappy. It's got two-wheel peel on the rear. It's got that LS that I know would stomp this 350, and it's got T-tops, so I fit in it. The car's just perfectly crappy. That's exactly what Dirt Reynolds is. So we don't need two F-bodies in our life. The Duffin is in agreement with me. He says, yep, I'm over it. We can let this one go. If you're watching this video in like uh, March of 2024 or 2026, this car is going to be long gone. I don't think this one's going to last long. A lot of our cars sell the first day the video goes out. What is it? Martin Luther King Day is when this video comes out. So happy Martin Luther King Day. Uh, hopefully you work for the government so you get the day off. Duff and I will be working. Mondays are busy. Replying to comments, we do read every single one. We don't reply to all of them, but we read every single one. So appreciate all you folks that leave comments. But yeah, like I said, this car will go quick. A lot of the cars sell the Monday that the videos come out. And I, Got a feeling this one will be the same way. Uh, and the steering wheel needs to be cleaned, whoever buys this thing. Idle needs to be turned down a little bit though. Easy enough. And also I noticed when I was checking the turn signals, this is a factory cruise control car, so. Oh, and I knew that underneath the hood that all the cruise control stuff is there, but if you spend enough time or bought some aftermarket conversion, you can make all that stuff for it. Cruise, tilt, AC, this thing would be a great summer cruiser. I think it'll do it from a spin, from a dig. No, nope. she ain't got the snort to break him loose rolling at uh, 25 mile an hour. Tough, you're just fogging up the window like mad over there. Also, my sincerest apologies to the future owner of this thing that got a dirty passenger seat from the Duff Dog, but I should charge extra for that. Ready, Duff? Hang on. Oh yeah, just smokes that one tire. Nice firm shifts in the tranny. This is going to make somebody a really, really, really amazing a little bit of work but all the major big stuff the expensive stuff is done just because the gravel roads are all solid ice the weather's cold i don't have any good gear if we put her in the ditch i don't want to put this thing in the ditch i don't want to tear this thing up i think i think we're just going to stick to burnouts this week no donuts so we're just going to have to go and cut in old footage of me doing burnouts in the other f bodies Camaro, Berlinetta, 
wannabe Z28 just like this one that is now owned by Landshark Garage. Go check them out if you want updates. this video wrapped well there you have it folks we took this 1978 camaro facebook fine and we turned it into something a whole lot better we got the heater working we got the power steering air conditioning pulleys brackets all that stuff jiving we got the rear end flushed we got better wheels and tires we got the cooling system hopefully resolved we got way better seats almost forgot about that we cleaned up some wiring yeah this thing's pretty good be pretty good in your yard so thank you very much for watching check out our merch we got beanies we got uh hoodies we need carhartt jackets because it's way too cold so go check all that out at mortski.com thank you very much for watching check out our other videos don't forget to like share comment subscribe all that good stuff remember doesn't matter how you get it done as so long as you are having fun f body burnouts the funnest yeah Duff loves the cold weather. Well, you can hang out here by yourself. I'm wrapping this video.